sausages. What do you think? Well, <clears throat> 12 minutes past 8. So, a crisis. Insoluble problem, major crisis. <laughs> Both stepmothers want their names on the wedding invitations. <laughs> Catherine adores her stepmother, who more or less brought her up. She wants her name on the invitation. She wants it, and her stepmother is not anticipating, which is understandable since the mother is dead, not appearing next to Catherine's father. Whereas my stepmother, whom I detest, it's out of the question her name should appear on the invitation, but my father won't have his name on it if hers isn't, unless Catherine's stepmother's name is left off it, which is completely unacceptable. I suggested none of the parents' names should be on it. After all, we're not adolescents, we can announce our own wedding and invite people ourselves. So Catherine screamed her head off, arguing that would be a slap in the face to her parents who are paying through the nose for the reception, and particularly for her stepmother, who's gone to so much trouble for her when she isn't even her daughter. And I finally let myself be persuaded, totally against my better judgment, because she wore me down. <laughs> I finally agreed that my stepmother, whom I detest, who is a complete bitch, will have her name on the invitation. <laughs> so, I telephoned my mother to warn her. Mother, I said, I've done everything I can to avoid this, but we have absolutely no choice. Colette's name has to be on the invitation. And she said, if Colette's name is on the invitation, then take mine off it. Mother, I said, please, I beg you, don't make things even more difficult. And she said, how dare you suggest that my name is left to float around the card on its own, as if I was some abandoned woman below Colette who would be clamped onto your father's name like a limpet. <laughs> my friend's waiting for me. I'm going to hang up, and we'll discuss all this tomorrow after a good night's sleep. And she said, why is it I'm always an afterthought? What are you talking about, Mother? You're not always an afterthought. Of course I am! And when you say don't make things even more difficult, what you mean is, everything's already been decided, everything's been organized without me, everything's been cooked up behind my back. Good old Nadia, she'll agree to anything. Well, this, she said, get this. In aid of an event, the importance of which I'm having some trouble grasping. Mother, I have friends waiting for me. That's right, there's always something better to do. Anything's more important than I am. Goodbye! And she hung up. <laughs> now Catherine, who was sitting next to me, but who hadn't heard her side of the conversation, said, what did she say? I said, she doesn't want her name on the invitation with Colette, which is understandable. I'm not talking about that. What did she say about the wedding? Nothing. You're lying! I'm not. Catherine, I promise you, she just doesn't want her name on the invitation with Colette. Call her back and tell her. When your son's getting married, you rise above her vanity. I said, it's about your stuff. That's got nothing to do with it! It's me! I'm the one who's insisting her name's on it. It's not her, the poor thing. She's the guy personified. If she had any idea the trouble this was causing, she'd be down on her knees begging for her name to be taken off the invitation. Now call your mother! So, I called her again. I now I'm in shreds, and Catherine's listening on the extension. Yvonne, my mother says, up to now you've conducted your affairs in the most chaotic way imaginable, and just because out of the blue you've decided to embark on matrimony, I find myself obliged to spend all afternoon and evening with your father, a man who I haven't seen for 17 years, and whom I was not expecting to have to reveal my hip size and my puffy cheeks. Not to mention Colette, who, incidentally, I may tell you, according to Felix Parolari, has now taken out bridge. My mother always played bridge. I can see that all that can't be helped, but on the invitation, the one item that everyone is going to receive and examine, I insist on making a solo appearance. Now, Catherine, who's listening on the extension, shakes her head and screws up her face in disgust. Mother, I say, why are you so selfish? I'm not selfish. I'm not selfish, Yvonne. You're not going to start too. You're not going to be like Madame Romero this morning and tell me I have a heart of stone, that everybody in our family has a heart of stone. That's what Madame Romero said to me this morning. She's gone completely insane, by the way. When I refused to raise her pay to 60 francs an hour cash, she had the gall to say that everyone in her family has a heart of stone, when she knows perfectly well about poor Andre's pacemaker. You haven't even bothered to drop him a line. Huh. That's right. Very funny. Everything's a joke to you, Yvonne. It's not me who's the selfish one. You've still got a lot to learn about life. But you go, Don. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go and see your precious friends. <laughs> <laughs> then what? Then nothing! <laughs> Nothing's been resolved! I hung up! Mini drama with Catherine cut short because I was late. Why do you let yourself be fucked over by all these women? <laughs> Why do I let myself be fucked over? I don't know! They're all insane! <laughs>